the name has changed, but the conversations remain the same. It's now a woman's perspective. The Daughters of Sheba Foundation will continue its tradition. Nothing will take us off track from the woman's perspective. Join us each month. manifestation means that level number one you are a physical being you have a heart that makes up part of your circulatory system you have a urinary system you have eyes you have teeth you know i can feel your pulse i could i could weigh, weigh you how much i'm um, you are 150 pounds 170 pounds you are 80 kilos that's physical and tangible so when you go to the doctor they could see that your skin is pale so they could see that your your, your eyes are yellow it's jaundiced so they could see these physical symptoms and they could prescribe for it. The same way then, you have your, your emotional self. The emotions, they are not as tangible as your physical self. So it's not like you could say, man, look a slice of happiness. Look a slice of anger. Look a slice of grief. Look a slice of reproach. Right? You, they, are, they are intangible. You, they, you cannot wait. But it's all part of you. You could experience happiness. So your physical self can experience an emotional sensation because you have a part of your endocrine system, the physical anatomy. Your brain has that capacity to transform an intangible feeling of happiness, a thought. Oh, I remember when my mother used to hug me and kiss me, you know, and you smile. So you'll see a man just sit down and just smile. And you say, what's with you, my man? Just a foot, you know, made, made him smile. Was it a, a, a foot that he eat or he drank? No. But because that foot was a loving foot, it made his, his, his physical structure produce serotonin and make him physically experience happiness. So the same way, if it is that it was a bad foot, it could make him produce cortisol or adrenaline. And then you could see him cry and you could see the physical tears. You could have seen or touched the sadness, but you could see the tears. You could hear the crying because his endocrine system has transformed an intangible, an emotional feeling into a physically tangible feeling. Right? So that's the emotional self. Right? How you protect yourself with your thought pattern, how happy, how sad you are, which, are, which is intangible, but it's still part of you. So if someone comes with cancer, right? You have to deal with their emotions to heal them, right? Then you have your effort, the ephril, the energy, your vibrational frequency. That means that, I, I'm sure you've heard of the phantom theory, whereby a diabetic person could have a diabetic ulcer, and they, they need to get an amputation, they cut off their leg, but their toe still itch. And even if the toe has been cut off, they still feel the toe is itching and trying to, you know, they might even feel that the leg is still and get up and fall. Right? So it's the same way that you might have something in your pocket. And even if it's not in your pocket, you still feel it's in your pocket because it's been there for so long. So the energy vibration, the energy frequency of it is still there. Okay? So then they say, well, I just like that man, that vibe, you know, and have a good energy, you know, right? 
and then the energy of yourself and all these things there will determine your emotional state, you know. So if it is that you are wrong as uh, uh, somebody with bad energy, always complaining, boy, you know, you know, priest, you know, boy, you see that go you know that man, you know man, how are you gonna feel emotionally if you're just going to be absorbing all the complaints and the complaints and the complaints and the whining? It's going to affect their vibration, gonna affect your emotion. That's gonna affect your endocrine system. That's going to make make you produce hormones. I'll get you sick. Dream me out, fire. Dream. Wow, 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 wow. Good evening, everybody. My name is Claudia Chesterine Campbell, and I am the president and chairperson of the, or is it the chairperson, president, whatever, of the Daughters of Sheba Foundation. Thank you for being with us again for another uh, woman's perspective. This evening, as you can see, we have a very deep, but we hope informative and maybe educational, definitely, and um, hopefully entertaining conversation about the mind-body-spirit connection. The Daughters of Sheba Foundation is a Canadian-registered, Canadian-based in Edmonton, Alberta, non-profit organization, and which I said I am the president and chairperson of. Um, the Daughters of Sheba, we, we mainly do... Um, social media and website interventions, but we also do direct interventions by way of grants and so forth. Um, we are privately funded and this is our fourth year. As August 10th, we'll be celebrating our fourth year and as an organization. Our sole focus and purpose is to support women, women and those who love them. But our focus, because from time to time, I will get messages from men. Up to yesterday, I got a message from a man who wanted me, us, to help him to, to migrate to Canada. And I had to say to him, first of all, we are not in the migration business. And secondly, our focus is on women. Even if we were, it would be women. Um, so that's what we do. And um, Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us live or thank you for watching this video afterwards. This evening, I have my fellow, I'm supposed to be joined by my two of my directors, but at this time, I only have one with me who is Clara Brown, who is looking away, not at you. <laughs> Clara Brown is the director and secretary of the Daughters of Sheba Foundation. Clara, I don't know if you want to say a quick word of welcome before I um, bring on our guest. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, she's a jokester around us. <laughs> okay, so I want to say good evening to our first two um, viewers, uh, Cleo Carl Hutchinson. Thank you, Cleo, for joining us from Kingston, Jamaica, or somewhere in Jamaica. And of course, our dearest Colleen Query Delamota, who is joining us from St. Catherine, Jamaica. Colleen is one of our admins at the Daughters of Sheba Foundation and in our private group, which is called the Sacred Space with the Daughters of Sheba Foundation. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. As I said, we are joined by a very special guest, and I will bring her. And Lorna Gay, Lorna, how you doing? I am very well, thank you. It's wonderful to be here again, Claudette. Again, yeah. So Lorna was with us um, about two months ago or so when we had a conversation about sexuality and um, female sexuality, which was very, very interesting. Um, I don't know if we will get there in any touch on it any at all as we speak about the mind-body connection tonight. But um, Lorna is... Um, very informed, educated verse on the topic. Lorna's mission in the world is supporting people in living sexually free and spiritually whole life. And so we are focused on the spiritual part tonight. Lorna has been a teacher and catalyst leading people on transformative journey for 25 years. After being a stay-at-home mom for 10 years, followed by an eight-year career as an educator in the school system, Lorna turned her focus to wellness. First for herself and then as a teacher of energy medicine, somatic sex education, and bondage. I love saying that, bondage. As a somatic sexual spiritual alchemist, intuitive energy healer, story unweaver, bondage trainer, and an award-winning speaker, Lona is creating safe and sacred spaces, catalyzing potent transformations in the lives of people and leading people through the feminine-led life. So that is a lot to take in, and she, I'm sure, will weave some of that in our discussion this evening about the mind-body-spirit connection. Um, we hopefully will be joined later by Gloria Royal. 
why do I keep on calling her Gloria Royal Davis? Because I knew her Gloria Royal Davis. Gloria Rose Saunders, our director and treasurer of the Daughters of Sheba Foundation. Now, um, like I said, our conversation tonight is a very broad topic, um, Lorna, the body-mind-spirit connection. But um, like I said to you before we came on, you know, as always, we want to focus on women and how, how, how as women, the need, importance, relevance, significance of understanding what is the body, mind, spirit connection and how do they as women embody that connection. So let us start there um, with a, maybe in your, in your, from your perspective, what an understanding, what is the body, mind, spirit connection? a great great topic and a question and as you say it's very broad and so to be able to sometimes it might be about bringing one piece in and connecting it to the other uh, and i would say in some ways that we have this idea that it is that all of those things are separate and and so sometimes that's where in the medical perspective or different places where we look at just look at the mind we look at the body we look at the spirit of things as opposed to a holistic view and be able to recognize that there may be something that's showing up in a physical sense that actually is a is a mind uh, component or there might be a spiritual piece that's showing up that uh, that actually is um, manifest in a spiritual or pardon me in a physical sense so to be able to look at at each of these components for what the for the lens that they provide as we're looking at something, but to remember that we are looking at at the whole of who we are. Yeah. So, um, you know, can you give us an example, just just so that I like to make things very practical for people. Um, and as we were watching that clip, you know, he gave a couple of examples about diabetics, um, and if you lost your foot, how you would still feel the. Do you feel as if you still have your foot um, or a toe or whatever? He also spoke about cancer. Can you, not necessarily using diabetes or cancer, but can you use something and just to, to break it down for people, how they can recognize, okay, this is not just that I have this illness. It is coming from here, there, whatever. Can, can you do that for us, please? I can. Uh, I, I'll use my an example from my own experience, actually. When I was teaching in the school system, uh, I began my sixth year of teaching, and uh, within two weeks, I got a case of laryngitis. Well, as a teacher, it's kind of handy to have a voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quite weak as well, and so I was off for a, you know a few days till that my voice came back. Came back, and within another couple of weeks, there was my I had laryngitis again, and and the weakening of the the body. So between September and Christmas, I was off probably about four different times wa watching this cycle go on. And as it turned out, I spoke to my doctor and I said, I think it just really is supportive and best if I just stay off, number one, for myself, and then also for the school, for the children, you know, to have that, to create some continuity for them. So it just feels like it's best for me to stay off for a, a significant period of time. So I was off from uh, the middle of January through to the end of the school year. And in that time, so I had these, and in that time as well, the doctor, the specialist had uh, given me the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. And, and I kind of, okay, thank you. And I was just determined that that was, I was not going to hold to that label, even though as a school teacher, uh, that I could have gone on to long-term disability and I would have got, you know, money from that. But I thought, no, it's not worth it. So that's where it really began my journey of, and I say the gift of that illness, that it really took me into my journey of my spiritual awakening starting to happening, uh, to be able to look at, okay, what is it? What is it that I gain from being sick? Mm -hmm. and, oh, we're, you know, and to be able to look at, oh, I get attention. Oh, I don't have to do things. I have an excuse for not doing things I don't want to do. And it was just kind of amazing to start to bring up some of those things. So instead of it just being this physical sense and how do we treat it with, uh, you know, whether it's alternative or allopathic means, it was, let's go deeper. Let's look at it from another perspective. And that was just an amazing journey for me of even having this perspective of, uh, 
at one point in growing up in a in a Christian home, you know, I had that religious background. And it started to take me into this place even of the spiritual sense of things, of feeling like, oh, there's there's more to this than just the physical. And at one point even I remember having this vision of the image of what would be would have been called Jesus walking towards me all in white mm -hmm. and coming towards me, towards me, towards me, and went into me, and I could feel this energy, this bright light within me. And and then moments later, this image walked away, and this was still there. It didn't take the whiteness, the brightness and light away. And it was that awareness that I've never been separate from this. It was just a reawakening to that. And as I started to dive into that even more, it just realized that, wow, this the, the spirit speaks to us through the body so that that body our bodies are the instrument if you will of the spirit so when we can start to really listen to to what the body is saying then we can start to be attentive to what is it about what is that what it's ready to shift maybe there's uh, an old belief system that no longer fits sometimes mm -hmm. you gave you know we had the example of the right the rock the video at the beginning that rock in the pocket or something in the pocket even when it's gone mm -hmm, it's there mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. we're used to living from places where where we have these beliefs that we don't know that there's anything else like asking a fish what's it like to be in water it's kind of like what what do you mean because we've we've been immersed we've been growing up in these environments in these situations that we think that this is us what about it and so it's to start to take take away and break away those old ideas, those perceptions of, of what is. And then to be able to look at the mind, the role that it plays. Uh, there's a big, a big focus on talking about mindset. Let's do mm -hmm. affirmations, think positively. I like to use the word mindset, and I do. A mindset is really looking at the stage of the mind. What and look at what are the characters in this in this play that's going on in our mind, almost nonstop sometimes. Let's start to look at those characters, those voices that I've always thought were me. And I'm like, wow, can I look at them and actually start to look at that character? It's, wow, that looks like a little waif, you know, curled up in fetal position. Or that's, that's as I look into that voice and recognize, actually, there's a character there that's more like an old, old man. You know, and start to look at the mindset and start to then take away, while at one level it's to recognize that we're all, it's all one, mind, body, spirit, but to be able to say that, oh, I thought that was me. I thought that that voice that was saying, you know, berating or, oh, way to go, or, you know, oh, look at what you would look like in the mirror, or those various voices that we hear, it's kind of, oh, that's just a play that's happening in our mind, because mm -hmm. often what our mind is very different than what's happening in this moment. Right. I, I remember when I first, um, so Clara, ask the question, Clara. Okay. I, I was, as, as you were speaking, Lorna, I was just, um, and you spoke about this stage of your mind. Is there a difference between the stage of your mind and the state of your mind? The state of our mind and the stage of our mind? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yes. Mm. Great question. <laughs> I would say that when we can look at the stage, look at it as a, a play that's that happening, that that awareness itself can very much start to shift things. It's when something's going on and on and kind of, oh, wow, I, I'm happening. I'm not being noticed. But all of a sudden, I'm if I'm being noticed, then it's kind of like, oh, they see me. And so I think that our attention, I think my, my, my senses and my experiences, as we start to pay attention to our mind, not in a loop, which is often, you know, we often do that way. And I, <laughs> I know that very well. But as we start to pay attention, then it's things can shift. If we can just observe, be that observer of what's going on, rather than thinking and believing that it's us. 
things can start to shift and the state of our mind starts to shift. Incidentally, I don't know why I remember this just now. I think I met my, my Ethiopian personality in my dream last night. Uh, it was a very vivid dream. She was, um, or maybe is, because uh, the theory is, is that we live, there's multiple universes occurring at the same time. So she is, uh, as I said, an Ethiopian princess, um, queen, actually. And I saw my husband and we were having marital issues and but 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 it's funny that it 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 came it came to me now because isn't that part of the the whole mind body spirit connection um for us to be aware of we i always wonder why do we forget the other lives that we have lived you know and 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 how can we retrieve them and and um learn from them have you ever thought about that lorna I have, and it seems to me that a part of it has been in a, what I call by divine design, that from the time that we enter this human experience, there's this sense of starting to look outside of ourselves. So, for example, a baby comes in, doesn't know any words, can make some sounds, and is just taking things in through the senses. And little by little, you know, it's kind of like, oh, hi, baby. And, you know, here's mommy and here's daddy and here's the puppy and here's a cup and here's an orange and here's a giraffe and here's, uh, here's our house. Here's what, what the yard looks like. Here's the playground. Oh, you're feeling angry. And all of these things are starting to be given labels. So when we think about a giraffe, is a giraffe a giraffe? No. Mm -hmm. It's just what the name that it's been given. given. And often it comes from that sense of uh, that there is a vibration to the experience, the energy of what's there. And a word can, can be resonant to that. But the word is not the experience. The word is not the emotion. And so to be able to <clears throat> look at we come into this world connected to our spirit essence and come into here. And little by little, it's we're starting to look outside of, oh, here's this, here's that, this, try to find our way in the world, doing these emotions. And some of those emotions are, oh, don't, don't feel that. It's too dangerous. You're a boy. Don't feel that because boys don't cry. You're a girl. Oh, don't feel sexual because that's, you know, that's shameful. Mm -hmm. So those various places where we are starting to disconnect. And I would say that that's, a part of the experience is to feel separate from or have the experience as if we are separate from not only ourselves and everything around us, even those things within us. And that would then extend to the aspect of past lives or different dimensions that you know. And, and in some ways, it's, what, a, what a glorious thing, because what an adventure to be able to, what's it like to explore and into our cosmos? What's it like to... Um, have adventures into other lands or to be in relationships with people. And so it's these experiences that are created through this sense of otherness as opposed to our oneness. And that would include into the aspect of our other lives, past lives, different dimensions, different realms, different life forms that mm -hmm. we think we are. And so I, I, I would say that that's a big part of it. It's to create this what an amazing experience. And the more that we can start to feel separate from, the more amazing it is as we start to come back into this awareness of the oneness. And so this example, you know, of the dreams that happen, these pieces. That right. Have, there's a part of us, part of the whole that's connecting in. Thank you for watching, um, folks, and you're watching A Woman's Perspective. It is a program of the, a monthly program of the Daughters of Sheba Foundation where we have conversations with women like uh, Lorna to get their perspective on an issue that we find important. This month at the Daughters of Sheba Foundation, we are focused on the mind-body-spirit connection, and Lorna is giving us her take on, on this connection. Lorna, um, like I said to you when we started, I want to get to how... As women, why is it important? It's important for everybody. 
you know, and this is, I, I, this is the big secret or the big knowledge that has been kept from many people. I remember when I first came across this kind of teaching, I was live, still living in Jamaica. So this was over 22 years ago. And I, so it would have been maybe about 25, 30 years ago when I first came into this understanding, this teaching. And I was like, really? Really? And it was just so fascinating to me, you know, and, but we don't teach this to children. We don't teach this in, in certain societies. We, um, we don't teach, Clara, the very experiences which connect us also separates us. Why do you keep writing it and not say it, Clara? <laughs> because because uh, as it comes to me then and you were talking, so. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, why don't we, as, as Clara has said in our private chat here, the very experiences which connects us also separates us. Why is it that these things are not taught in school. Why is it? You know, I've always, I attended a church in Jamaica where I learned all of this or started the process, the learning process. And one of the critiques I've always had of them is why aren't you out in the street shouting this out to people that, you know, this poverty that you keep talking about, this, this, sickness that we keep talking about last week it was Clara or the week before we had a doctor Amanda Atkins who who's it's trying to convert me to the plant-based diet and which I'm exploring I said to her you know I've been I'm not going to say I am but I have had diabetes for 30 years and um I've never claimed it I've never claimed it. So my, my, my doctors always wonder, why can't we control this thing? And why are you still living? And I'm like, because I've never claimed it. I, diabetes doesn't have me. It's just something that's happening to my body. And I don't relate it to, at least consciously, to what I eat. Now I'm wearing this patch because my, doc, my doctor insists. And to satisfy him, I wear it. And yes, it helps me. But... I don't make that connection. I don't connect illness with Claudette. I don't. And like I would say to people, and sometimes Clara thinks I'm cold because I say, I don't do pity parties. Don't call me and tell me, and I'm not going to sit down with you and have this moaning and groaning about some illness. Yes, I understand that you're going through this experience, but I'm not going to sit down and say, oh, the end is near and all of that. That's just not me. Why is it that we don't make this knowledge more widely known and particularly for women? Sorry, I just went off there. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. And I, I hear your passion and your, you know, your, yeah, how strong of a piece this is for you. I see that we live in a mirror and when we, I think probably, <laughs> you know, how many people this, this today have stepped up to the mirror at least one time, you know, whether to brush teeth or to put our hair on, you know, our, our face on, our hair, our clothes, whatever. And when we step up to that mirror, we're actually not seeing what is, we're actually seeing the reverse of what is, we're seeing the opposite of what is. And I mm -hmm. see light not only as a story, I also see it as a mirror image. We're, we see through a glass darkly. That means we're looking through a mirror. We see through a glass darkly. We're seeing the opposite of what is. So when we look at the way that in our current experience and our recent experience where there seems to be women that are repressed and this male dominance, ah, if we look at it that it's actually looking in the mirror, ah, this perhaps the more natural and spiritual way of being. Now, this doesn't mean that it's about negating men, not at all. Because mm -hmm. as, we spirit, as spirit, we come into this human spirit, human experience, form is necessary. Feminine is spirit, masculine is form. And we have had it um, in our, div by divine design, experience of looking in the mirror we've had it as if male female are separate just as mm -hmm. we have them that spirit and humanity are separate mm -hmm. and that woman female as you said i'm not cutting there just to interject as you said woman is um emotion and they've made emotion a bad thing yeah yeah 
And so to be able to make it look like uh, there's, if I'm in this female body, that I should be looking for a partner that has a male body. And so there's this whole idea of incompleteness or this sense of I need somebody else to complete me. But when we start mm -hmm. to look at the male bodies, female bodies, they represent a, um, two different images that seemingly fit together. But if we bring that in, that it's not even about male bodies and female bodies, but let's start to look at it as feminine and masculine and bring that together, that we're actually not separate at all, not only in what we see around us, the mirror that we see around us, but also within this body, we are not separate. And sometimes there can be this take on, let's look at it of these feminine qualities. And am I in my masculine right now? And I go as far as to say that every one of us is perfectly right now in our feminine and masculine because it is that feminine energy, spirit is feminine, masculine is form. So this form, no matter if I have what set of genitals, no matter what my what my gender is, this form is masculine. We are all in a masculine form, no matter what it looks like or what shape it is. And it's the spirit that is animating all of us. So we've been looking outside of us for that partner to be able to have this balance, to have this oneness. And it's kind of, it's right here, hidden in plain view. It's been here all along. So let me see if I, I get what you're saying. Um, form is masculine. So it means that all of us walking around in a body, that body is a masculine body. Um, what's inside of that body, Carrie, you're falling asleep. What's inside, that, <laughs> what's inside that body is the feminine, the emotions, the, the, is that correct? Uh, that's a big part of it for sure. Um, Audre Lorde has this quote, and I've, I've really leaned into it more and more over these last 15 years since my sexual awakening. Mm -hmm. She says, we tend to think of the erotic as a quick, tantalizing sexual arousal. I speak of the erotic as that deepest life force energy that moves us in a fundamental way. So that erotic energy, that life force energy that moves every one of us, that, that, that is the inspiration, that is that life force, that breath within every one of us that beats our hearts, that gets us to breathe, that animates us. That's that spirit. That's the feminine. And here's the masculine giving structure to this experience. So I told you guys that we would come to sex some way, somehow. My favorite. <laughs> My favorite topic. <laughs> um, but let me, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not diverging, but it's been something that's, I've gotten us into trouble the last few weeks. So let's talk about transgender then based on what you're saying. Um, and if you are transgender, you don't need to answer me. I just, I just want to, to understand how does that fit in? If the, if the, the, the body is masculine, the internal is feminine, and, and I'm just putting it in layman's terms, where does the transgender, our transgender fellow human beings, where do they fit into this? <clears throat> While I can't speak for everyone, and I don't, I've, of the transgender people that I am blessed to know in my world, I think it comes from different perspectives. That, as they will say, is there's this sense of they're more a woman than a man. Uh, if they're in, they feel like they're in a different body. And for some people, it's they can, they're okay to be, oh, here's my body. I have breasts, but I feel more like a man. So it's tapping into that masculine energy that feels more dominant. And for some people, they feel like I want to get rid of, you know, I want to get rid of these breasts. You know, they have their top surgery, but their bottom surgery. And that there's these aspects of I want to have my physical representation re reflect what I feel like inside. And I would say that in many ways, our transgender people are really um, lighthouses 
um, because they're starting to say, hey, there's, I feel different than what I look because we've had this idea that somebody with a penis is, is a male. Somebody with a vulva is a female. And that's where it is. And as if, as if this idea that, wait a minute, you've got something, you've got this and you want to change it or you feel different or you don't want to put these two parts together. You want to put these two parts together. You want to put these two parts together. Like, what is this? And I think that the transgenders are being this light in our world to say that, hey, we are not a binary. And there, you know, there are people that are binary, non-binary, that the transgender will say, hey, we have these perceptions of what it is that we're supposed to be. I don't feel like that's what represents me. And so for some people, like I say, they can they can live in that experience, whatever their body is. And some people go through the surgeries to be able to have it where it feels more like, oh, okay, this feels like home. And I, I have a sense that as we continue to awaken more and more to the realization that, number one, who we are is not our bodies. And that a male, bo a male body person and a female body person, they can have those very different experiences. They can feel very much their masculine and feminine within they can feel their feminine and masculine all within and where it will come probably to the place i as i see it that it doesn't matter that somebody can be in this kind of a body and this time i feel very much like a woman this time i feel very much like a man or that masculine comes out more and more and so i would say that the transgenders in many ways are reflecting the changes the changing of the tide that is happening in our culture but which is then reflected happening within us i can tell you i'm very uncomfortable with this change in tide um I, i'm i'm just being honest um i i am and my discomfort comes from being an avid woman's rights advocate that that's where my discomfort comes from not not because of the sex and who's sleeping with who that's 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 the least of my concern um mm -hmm. anybody who knows me know that would be the least of my concern my concern is um, women's rights as has always been and will always be. So for for people to say they feel disconnected in the way that they want to to change their body, go for it. But don't call yourself, you're not a bearer of children. Um, so for me, the people who have been bearing the children for since creation and have been subjugated soon after since the church has been established mm -hmm. if we want to call us a different name but i am strongly against a man who has changed his body calling himself a woman and wanting to diminish my right as as historically has been as a woman that's i don't know if that any of that makes sense uh, or if you understand where I'm coming, and you don't have to. You don't have to say anything yeah, on that. It's, nice it's, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just a personal mm -hmm. thing as a woman's rights advocate. And um, I think I come down on the side of what's her name? That Harry Potter. Um, J.K. Rowling. Ah, huh? what's her name? J.K. Rowling. No, the the author of Harry Potter books. Mm -hmm. What's her name? Yeah, she. She yeah. she got in under she's they're trying to cancel her because of her position. And I hold that same position in terms of women's rights. The those of us who were born female and who um our femininity have been the subject of suppression and oppression. I have a problem with that. Anyway, Tara, mm -hmm. over to you. Any questions? No, I'm I'm just um When um, Lorna made the point that, um, okay, having a penis, then we are called then we are called male or accorded male gender, and the opposite vulva, and we are accorded to be called females. Mm -hmm. But um, isn't that? Isn't that how we were created as man and woman? 
it's not. We were that. created male and female. Male and just, and just, female. To, just to be politically correct, Clara, and to be the yeah. terms. We were created yeah, male, male and female. female. So and woman not... and man is are the genders which has been assigned to us by the powers that be. So th that's the argument. So we are females. I'm not cisgender. I do not call me cisgender. What I, is cisgender? We are. That's the new thing that they're saying that we are cisgender, the people who, so we are born female and we feel like females, so we are cisgendered. You're born male and you feel like a male, so you're, cis, you're cisgender. That's <laughs> first cry when you come out of your mother's mm -hmm. womb. And I, I really, uh, I really honor. You're, you're already a man. A bit female or, or male um, and it's not a societal label so to speak mm -hmm. so Lorna if you're uncomfortable with where this is going because this you know please feel I'm free not, I'm not, no, I'm not I, 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 and I, I think that has I think a, a key piece of, of conversations is to be able to be able to express you know the the different views because we're we're in various times where where we have had different experiences and we're in these evolution times and you know, including this aspect of where where females women have been repressed and you know this changing of the tide that's happening is raising this up and so Claudette thank you you know so much for the work that you're doing in bringing this up in bringing women up and advocating for women and for women's rights. And I see as well that this is actually, as it's happening, it's starting to write. And again, when I talk about the mirror, it's we're starting to look at things as they are and looking at bringing up, and, and that's a big part of my work is the feminine led life. Mm -hmm. And as, as we, bring women up as we raise the feminine that it's not about negating the masculine it's actually by doing so it creates this place where the masculine now has a place to be in support of and in service to and there will be some men that will rail about that it's kind of like i want to be my free man it's kind of like from my work um over this last 15 years I have come to understand, and I was married for 30 years, and I didn't understand the heart of the masculine. And in my awakening is where it was kind of like, oh, I see things totally different. And then through my work to be able to see that the heart of the masculine is to be in support and service. And so as we're having this women's empowerment movement, it is starting to write things, if you will. But a part of that, it's it can't be that we negate or say we don't need men. And I know that there's been over these last several years, been, there's been movements of the men that say, we want to have nothing to do with women. We're not going to get married. We're going to just go on our own. We want to have nothing to do with it. And now as you were saying, Claudette, there's the movement where the women are saying, we want to have nothing to do with men. We want to just. Like, there's a yeah. big debate. There's a big debate going on on our page, our page about this, where, yes. you know, a lot of women are on our page saying that we, marriage i don't want it right. leave me alone <laughs> and i think and i've gone through those old stories of what does marriage mean I, I was married for 30 years i'm married currently to my husband and we've been married for 10 and a half years and so to be able to look at what does marriage mean what does what have we thought that it meant i mean when i was married it was who gives this woman to be married to this man wait a minute i'm not property but that <laughs> right? Um, save yourself for marriage. Oh, that means my body and my sexuality aren't mine. They belong to the marriage. They belong to my husband. And so these old ways of that where we've been taught and raised to bring it is this. But again, as we look in the mirror, we start to see, oh, this is the more what I see as and what my experience is, is this is the more natural way. Why? Because when there is female led, a female led life, that we are going with the initiative of and the feminine is about everything is a part of it the masculine or form or structure provides that experience 
So when I work with, say, couples, is oftentimes, again, coming back to this model where the feminine is or the women are repressed, don't have a voice, don't be sexual, right? We're taught you can be you're emotional, but don't be sexual. Men are taught you're sexual, but don't be emotional. Mm -hmm. And so on many levels, all of us have been taught to shut down what we're feeling. We're taught to suppress those very innate emotions, sexual desires and impulses. And so we shut down. And so this work about coming, can we allow women to come back into their bodies, into that embodied experience to feel their power, to feel their sexuality, to feel their leadership. And for men, for the masculine to feel, wow, I want, I can be here and in support of, just tell me what you need, tell me what you want. I'm here to support you. I will move heaven and earth for you. And so that's so, where I, yeah. Go ahead. No, uh, we have a couple questions here from, from Colleen for you. And it's in, in keeping with what you're saying. She says she's a bit confused. You said at first that our outer bodies are male and our spirits are female. Yet we have different genitals, which help to determine the difference between the not sure what you mean by the semester. Could you help me understand what you mean? Before you answer that, I just want to say, remember um, the, the gender thing is human construction and the male female is the biological. Anyway, go ahead. So um, Claire, I'll, or Colleen, I'll go back that I'll, I look at things from different levels. So if we first of all look at, we are brought into this human experience. We're here, we, we're born. We're born with whatever set of genitals. Some people have are born with two sets of genitals. Oh. Right, okay. So we're born, born with this. And in our human story, we're taught, there's, you know, here's the here's female and here's male. And when we come together, you know, through the act of sex, for procreation, for pleasure, that this aspect of two become one. And so there's that that experience that we want to try to, um, we have the sense of somehow I'm incomplete if I don't have a partner, if I'm not in a relationship, if I'm not married, if I'm not in a long-term relationship, somehow I'm complete, incomplete. So there becomes this, this thing about, oh yeah, find your partner, um, you know, and, and then you can know your oneness through that relationship. There is at another level is uh, this aspect of we think that, or, and we've been taught that it's external to us rather than it is male, masculine and feminine within us. And when we talk about feminine and masculine, different qualities get ascribed to each one. And we often talk about Feminine is yin and masculine is yang. There's actually in the feminine, there's yin and there's yang. In the masculine, there's yin and there's yang. The feminine yin is that aspect of the, the creativity, that nurturing, that, um, that just being present, those kinds of things. The yin, or pardon me, the yang feminine, yeah is that warrior goddess that that says no that that justice that calling that is saying no i'm going to destroy her the destroyer that says no this is not right so that's the yang feminine we have the yin masculine which is that nurturing held by the testicles so we have the testicles hold that seed of life if you will that that I can hold. And oftentimes we think about we hold space. We think that's a feminine thing. Holding space, can, we can look at it from the nurturing perspective, but it's also from those testicles, that holding. I'm going to hold space. And it's that structure that creates that space where we can be held. Then there is that yang masculine, which is that, that warrior, that action taker, that structure. So we have those all at play at one time. So when we are looking, um, when we can come back into this, this idea of feminine and masculine or male feel outside of us, we think, okay, I'm part, where's the other part outside of me? Now kind of, oh, 
okay, here's the next level is looking at, oh, there's masculine and feminine within me in terms of those characteristics, those attributes. Sometimes I'm in action. Sometimes I'm in nurturing. Sometimes I'm just holding space. Sometimes I'm, you know, this, this, um, this wrathful destroyer of no, this rightful justice. And I think that's a part of the, 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 the feminine that is often shut down because we think that that anger or that, that rightful anger is wrong rather than, no, oh, that's a part of our, our feminine nature. And, and so it doesn't really matter. As we start to come into this oneness within us, we start to realize that, oh, any one of us, when we are in our experience of our wholeness within this human experience, that sometimes we are nurturing. Fathers, I know so many fathers, my former husband and my husband included, who have been just incredibly nurturing fathers who have then been able to hold space to support, to create that structure, to be able to be in that place of rightful. So they can, so males, Males and females can be interweaving when we have, don't have this idea that there's something wrong with this masculine, that there's something wrong with. And when we have, and so now to come down to the next layer is that if we look at beyond the attributes, we come down to more of an, a, an energetic, spiritual level of things is that spirit is the energy that illuminating, that enlivening energy. That is what, spirit male or female? Um, I don't, I think in Meaning, the, the spirit, as you're talking about, the energy that energizes us is right. that male or female? I would say it's not male or female, it's genderless. But if we were to put a if we were to put a um masculine or feminine to it, it's again, we're to going to the next level is to look at that that life giving is that energy, the masculine, which we talk about is structure. And so that's where we can look at these bodies and say, oh, I ha there's structure here. There's structure that allows this life force energy to move. And so those structures are the masculine. And then after that, it becomes, it just drops away and here I am. So I that, that, spirit, that spirit or energy that we, that we are encouraged to claim is it that is just out there and then when i claim that particular spirit or energy and it is embodied it now becomes female because it is embodied in me as a woman mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, as i experience it it's that it's all it's all and we can even drop now the aspect of feminine and masculine because it all becomes what we could call energy, spirit, whatever. Because when we feel into our bodies, and um, a big part of my work is supporting people, males, females, um, masculine, feminine, wherever they are, it's to be able to just feel. What do we feel physically? What do we feel emotionally? And when we start to feel it, that all of a sudden we realize, oh, that which I have perceived as the the parameters of my body, oh, that's just a sensation. And pretty soon it starts to, it gives way where we realize that even form is a part of that energetic field of who we are. Wow. This has been, I didn't know this is where we were going to end up, <laughs> but I should have known <laughs> Um, so uh, another remark by um, Colleen was that the church was the rule of the world back then and the church created rules to keep people under control. We were kind of brainwashed. I totally agree with that. Uh, and I, I don't want to say we were kind of brainwashed. It's, it was their understanding at the time. And their as you said, because, yeah. yeah, their interpretation. And, and, and as Lorna is saying, we are now... I don't want to say era. I don't remember the word that you use, Lana, but we're now in a transition where everything is being turned around and re-examined and, you know, based on these centuries of experience, you know, to say, okay, is this right? This is, this doesn't feel right anymore. And I agree. It doesn't feel right. And this is why we're seeing women 
and men before saying, I don't want anything to do with men. I don't want, I don't want to get married. This institution of marriage is burn it down. It's mm -hmm. not working. And, and um, I get that. I get that, you know, like a uh, personal story. You know, I have been widowed now going on, well, this is the fourth year, going into the fourth year. And I, I keep saying to people, even before I got married, I have no, I really have no interest in marriage. I really don't want to be married. Um, I'm at my happiest single, you know, and I, I've been in this place for the longest while. So now that I'm a widow, it's like, I don't have any desire to change that. You know, and so I get it. I get it with what women are saying. But going back to the whole thing of um, body, mind, spirit connection, mm -hmm. is that a part of it? Is it that people are becoming more aware of, listen, this is a body. This is this is a body. I am a I am a spirit or a soul having a human experience through this body, and I want to be in truth to myself i want to be truthful to myself and part of that truth that i'm feeling through my spirit in this body is that i don't want to be married i don't want to be a, a house slave i i even even in, in work people are saying after covid i'm not doing a nine to five and you pay me pittance it's not gonna work is, is that all a part of of this evolution that we're talking about um I would say so, yes, in the sense of being, like you use the word enslaved to, you know, house slave or enslaved to that piece, but really coming back into this place of sovereignty, autonomy, but not in a, not in a way that is separate from, but more as a coming into this place of wholeness within, which then ripples out into an experience of the wholeness around us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and and Colleen is making another point that when you have sex with someone, you exchange energy with each other. Yeah. It, sex is the is the biggest exchange of energy. But we exchange. I exchange energy with you every day, Colleen, um, through our interactions on WhatsApp. I exchange energy with Clara. Right now, I'm exchanging energy with her, saying, "Wake up, Clara. We don't have much longer to go." I think. As we come more into alignment of our, I think, tell me if I'm wrong, the, the more we understand who we are, um, we, um, it's harder for us to be controlled. Is that true, Lorna? Mm -hmm. Or Clara? But there's, there's always going to be sovereignty. In some mm -hmm. in some form or the other, whether social, emotional, or uh, and even as as we evolve into this new thinking, there is always going to be a force or a system that we will look to for guidance whether we those of us who believe that there is a supreme being but there's always going to be that so and i don't think that is that is um going to go away at all there's always going to be some reliance on the guidance or, or the leadership of so i don't know what the future leader. holds Obviously, none of us know what the future holds. But Lorna, do you think that this structure that we have lived with for the past two thousand years is 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 changing? And as Kara is saying, do you think that we're going to get to the point where this this isn't working? It's mm -hmm. it's clear if, when we when we look across countries, it mm -hmm. isn't working. But, you know, some people think that they're disconnected. It's not disconnected. When we look at the immigration issues, we had a situation. Well, they had a situation in Jamaica where a plane landed with two hundred and fifty three Indians and Uzbekistan, and nobody knows where the hell this charter flight came from, who chartered it, and all of that. We have a situation here in Canada, and Lorna is also in Canada, where we have people demanding to stay in this country because they came here under one 
purview. They came here as students and now they, they're demanding to stay. So we're seeing it in immigration. We're seeing it in the law. We're seeing it in the economy. We're seeing the system crumbling. Um, I don't, it, it's crumbling. Will it crumble in the next 10 years? Maybe not. Will it, will the empire fall in the next thousand years? I don't know, but there is a change happening. I agree. I agree. And I see that again, from my experience is I see that the women, women's empowerment as women are raised up into their own power, their own sexuality and their leadership that this is, and that includes a recognition of the sacred role that the males and the masculine play in uplifting them, um, that, that it can't be separate. It's not a battle. It's about, oh, this didn't work because this is the natural, natural. natural way. So as women step into their power, their sexuality and leadership, that the masculine kind of like, oh, now I know where to put my energy. It's no longer into the, the battles. It's no longer into the violence. It's, ah, now I know I have a place I can channel, I can focus it because I have that leadership. And so I But men are resisting that. They are. Sure, yeah. And I would say that they are in what we have experienced in what we've what has been called the Because their structure is threatened. That's it's it's that. And it's also that that they have been taught um, certain ways of being. So this patriarchal system that we have experienced, everybody has lost out on it because the men yeah. haven't been able to be their whole selves. The women haven't been able to be the whole, their whole selves. So as we bring this into a feminine led life, as women arise in their power, their sexuality and their leadership, that the masculine and that energy now has a place to Oh, now I know where it fits. I can support this. I can put my energy into there. And that's that's when we look at it outside of ourselves and to look at um, what is happening within us. What part of us, whether we are called woman or called man, what part of me resists that feminine part of me? Which part of me resists or resents or rejects that masculine part of me? And so to be able to use what we see around us, um, number one, as a mirror, what is that reflecting to me to be able to come back into my wholeness? And it doesn't mean not to be active in our external world because that's how we get to express. But to be able to say, where do I feel? Where am I not embracing and owning and living from the wholeness of who I am? Oh, it's this, this, this is, this is fascinating. Um, I know I won't be around at least not in this form as, as, as this evolves, as this change, this shift, um, deepens and widens, you know, but, um, I, I, it's interesting how we got there because we're talking about mind, body, spirit connection, but it's, it's all a part of it. It's yes. all a part of it because as, like I said before, as, um, people come more and more into the understanding that I am more than a body, you know? So all these, I'm, I'm throwing everything into it. All these women who are going out, getting BBLs and getting their body fixed, you know, and only to have it fall apart in, in later years. And, and they realize, okay, I really am not a body, you know, they're, they're I think like as I have aged, you know, I'm next February, I'm 60 years of age. And um, as I've aged, I, I've, I've become more and more aware of my, the spiritual side of me. I'm not a Bible thumper. You know, I, we have had people take us on on our page, you know, saying, why are you saying Lord when you say you're a woman? Said Because to me, God is an essence. It's not a gender you know, so I will say, Lord, I will say, Mother God, I will say, Source, I will say, the Creator, I will say, even Allah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't care the name. What I care about is the substance. And mm -hmm. so, at the older I've gotten, and as I age, I'm becoming more and more aligned, not like you, Lorna. Clearly, you are near perfect. 
<laughs> but I am, I am, I'm becoming more and more aligned. And I feel that the more, I think that's just threatening. I think that's just threatening for many men, um, for women to become more and more aligned. And as you say, step into their power. And, and even I've noticed that even gay men are threatened by, by, by our wanting to take our place, you know, Am I wrong, Clara? Are you no, seeing really? that? Yep. I'm seeing it. I, I, even I, here on social a, media, a woman, they're attacking a, a women. Woman, they are attacking women for being a women. Woman, a woman who evolves into the, the being that owns and is aware of her power, that woman is a threat to the rest everybody. of mankind. Yes, and everybody. Not saying mankind in any gender-related way, but as a general thing, that yeah. woman, those women, that group of women, that system of women is seen as a threat to mankind. And I'm talking about, and these women who I'm talking about, they're not aggressive. They're not... Nope. Bitches, Naked. they're not dykes, mm -hmm. they're like Lorna, calm, focused, in in tune with themselves, and mm -hmm. yeah, they're so powerhouses. That's true. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's I've been I've had this incredible privilege um, and honor to in my work to have so many men over these years who come to me for sessions who are saying, how can I be, help me to be the best that I can for my, my wife, for my girlfriend, for my partner. And so that's where I say, when I said earlier that, you know, my eyes were opened up to be able to really see the heart of the masculine. And so for me, it's, it's to realize that there are amidst men who are, who are threatened and feeling challenged and feeling scared who are feeling scared because if we mm -hmm. if, if what they have known of themselves is taken away, who are they? And mm -hmm. so many times when any of us goes out of our familiar zone, out of what's familiar, it's kind of there's that fear of who am I? Who am I without yeah. this sickness? Who am I without mm -hmm. this construct? And so to be able to recognize that so many of us are operating from fear because we don't know what's on the other side of what's familiar. And so this opportunity that I've had to see behind the scenes, if you will, those many men who, um, you know, sometimes they are bakers on the street or bakers in the town. Sometimes they are policemen. Sometimes they are high CEOs and directors of companies. Sometimes there's the they're the the roofer on the in the county. Those various places that come from very all walks of life, who are literally kneeling and saying, please help me to be the best that I can be. So I am just so grateful for that honor. And that's where in my work, I say, I'm creating this space where I empower women. And I create this space for these men to be recognized, to see that their place of surrender is their strength. It's not their weakness. It's not a weakness at all. To be able to be there in support of. And that's where I see when these come together, that's where we know harmony harmony in our inner world and harmony in our outer world and homes of harmony for children to be raised in. As we wrap up here, Lorna, I just want to say, isn't the converse also true in terms of there are women who are afraid of women like you, who, who are afraid of women who we're not into any argument with you. We're not into any drama. Um, we're, 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 we're not going to debate with you whether patriarchy is wonderful or not. Um, this is our truth. This is who I am, and this is who I'm going to be. Do what you want. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of women who are even more triggered mm -hmm. by this new feminine that is arising, or not the new, but the original. Yeah, being awakened, brought forward again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so maybe one day we'll get back to the actual 
<laughs> I'm just wait. No, I'm kidding. But this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us, Lorna. Thank you so much for being here as well, Clara. Um, this has been, I, I love this conversation because we don't have ordinary conversations over here. We have the, the, the insightful, inspiring, um, intellectual, and even um, these deep conversations that take us on to, into the next realm. And I appreciate being able to, to call upon someone like yourself, Lorna, to lead us through that. By the way, I'm coming to BC in a few days. Oh, so. wonderful. Where are you again? In Kelowna, you said? Just outside of Vernon, so not about an hour from Kelowna. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I'm 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 going on the coast. I'm going to the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. 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 So, um, taking a spring vacation in a few days, so I'll be there for a little bit. Um, yeah. I love the ocean. So, so yeah. And okay. since yeah, yeah. As much as I try to do that, the Jamaican in you. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't try to deny the Jamaican in me, not at all. Um, I, I anyway, let's not even go your pants, swim. Clara, love, Clara, love to tell me what I can't do. You see, <laughs> yes, you can't I'm swim, you can't swim. Neither can I. So. <laughs> oh, so you're projecting. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lorna. Thank you. Um, I, I know you're an hour behind us, but it must it's your supper yeah. time. So no, so thank you. you for being here and um we look forward to having you again. Um I, I will bug you another time as well. Please do. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Clara. Have a good, have a good night, Clara. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And thank you, those who are watching this conversation afterwards. Um, have a good evening. And um, see you. Catch you next time. Catch you. I won't be around until late May for another live. So we'll see you then. Bye.